Ready to break free from algorithms, vanity PR, and money-sucking ads? My name is Larissa Worstiak, and I've learned in seven years of jewelry marketing that content is the crown jewel. My agency, Joy Joya, takes a holistic approach, leading with laser-focused storytelling, impactful content creation, and strategic content distribution. This method has worked for the solopreneur as well as the multi-million dollar company, and now I'm sharing the same system systems and tactics with you. Here's to standing out in the sea of sparkle. Welcome to episode 250. In this week's episode, we're diving headfirst into a topic that has been slowly but surely changing the game. We're talking about how artificial intelligence or AI can be your secret weapon in streamlining your content creation, whether it's for your website, your email marketing campaigns, or your social media campaigns, AI has got you covered. Now, throughout the year, I've been sprinkling some tidbits about AI tools like ChatGPT in our conversations, and I've given you a glimpse of how these tools can work behind the scenes, letting you supercharge your marketing efforts. But for this episode, we're throwing the spotlight entirely on this fascinating world. We'll be dedicating 100% of our time to unwrap the power of AI in content creation. This one's going to be about exploring new paths, embracing technological inv- advancements, and empowering yourselves in your jewelry businesses. I'll be covering what is ChatGPT, what are the general best practices and tips for using it, And what are some of my favorite use cases of ChatGPT for social media marketing, email marketing, and website content creation? I also just want to remind you that our free Jewelry Marketing Jumpstart program is wrapping up very soon at the end of July. Anyone who signs up before it ends will continue to have access to all the free resources, but I'll be closing off new signups at the end of July. So if you want to sign up, visit joyjoya.com slash jump while you still can. And Jumpstart members for this episode will get some sample prompts that they can use to get started with ChatGPT for jewelry marketing. But before we get to the solid gold, I'd like to take a moment to remind you that this podcast has both audio and video. So you can either listen on your favorite podcast platform or watch on YouTube by searching Joy Joya. You can support the podcast for free by taking the time not only to subscribe, but also to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. If you leave a review, I might read it on a future episode. So let me know about any takeaways or breakthroughs you've had while listening to this podcast. Speaking of podcasts, did you know I also co-host another podcast with jewelry marketer Liz Kantner? It's called Success with Jewelry. We have already released 44 free episodes where you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. And we also have an insider community where we interact directly with members. We share extended episodes, hands-on guidance, and more resources. Visit successwithjewelry.com to learn more. Okay, my sparklers, let's get into the next installment of Jewelry Marketing Jumpstart, all about using AI tools for jewelry marketing. As I mentioned, Jumpstart members will get some sample prompts that they can use to get started with ChatGPT for jewelry marketing. If you want access to those, make sure you're signed up by visiting joyjoya.com slash jump. So for those who aren't familiar with ChatGPT, it's an AI-powered platform that uses natural language processing to generate content. It's like chatting with a very smart friend. So the interactions feel human. They kind of remind me of the good old instant messaging days if you've ever used AIM or AOL Instant Messenger. And a really common question that I get asked about ChatGPT is, Is this tool plagiarizing content from the internet? The answer is no. It's been trained on vast amounts of internet content, yes, but what it does generate isn't just copied or scraped from the internet. It's more like an amalgamation of everything it's learned, quote unquote, learned from the internet, 
but delivered in a fresh new way. At the same time, you have to remember though, like the same way if you had a really diligent intern for your business, ChatGPT can provide great ideas and draft you content, but it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to have your expertise, your knowledge as the business owner. So it's really crucial to add our human touch, making sure that what ChatGPT is producing aligns with the brand message, isn't infringing infringing on any copyrights. So you always want to remember that it's an aid and not a replacement for your own creativity and judgment. So let's dig a little deeper into the nitty gritty of how ChatGPT can enhance our marketing strategies. What's really exciting is that the potential for this tool is practically limitless from drafting like whimsical social media captions to writing first drafts of email copy. It's really got us covered. So now that you know what ChatGPT is and like on a very (laughs) surface level how it works, I want to talk about some general tips for how you can start using it effectively. So the number one tip that you need to know about using ChatGPT is that it thrives on context. That is so important to know. The more context that you can provide it, the better the output will be. So a lot of people I know who have just tried it like once or twice, they feel very disappointed by it because they'll give it like one prompt or ask it one thing and then they are not impressed by the answers. But actually there's a lot of context that needs to be provided and sometimes there's back and forth involved in order to get the results that you want. So again, as I mentioned earlier, you kind of want to picture it as this eager, bright-eyed intern who's really ready to do their best for your business, but at the same time, they also need guidance. You wouldn't just expect to bring an intern on your team and have them know everything they need to know about your business. There's definitely a learning curve. There's a training period. So the more details you provide ChatGPT, the better the results will be. You want to treat the AI also almost as like a character. Think of it as like a character in a book that you're writing. And the more specific details, the more richness you can provide this character, the more they will like provide back to you and like become almost like a living person on a page. So it's really important to add layers of details to give it that context to really make it work for you. So don't feel disheartened if ChatGPT doesn't hit the bullseye with the first prompt. It is very rare that you will get exactly what you want just by giving it one prompt and then feeling disappointed or like, oh, this tool sucks. You want to see it as a conversation. You have to be ready to put in some work, but definitely trust me on this. The results will be worth it. So I want to talk about when it comes to email marketing, when it comes to social media marketing, when it comes to the to website content, I want to tell you about three really general ways that you can use ChatGPT for your marketing. And those are content ideation, content creation, and modifying existing content. So when I talk about content ideation, it's basically just a fancy way to say brainstorming for your marketing. If you're having trouble coming up with ideas or you have some ideas, but you want to kind of take those ideas to the next level or expand upon them, ChatGPT can really help you with that. So one example would be, let's say you prompt it with ChatGPT, pretend that you are doing a month long campaign for a giveaway for a free engagement ring for anyone who signs up for your email marketing. But you also wanna be promoting this campaign frequently on Instagram as well. What would be 10 ideas for promoting this giveaway to ensure the best reach? So that would be an example of something I would say to ChatGPT 
if I need some ideas for a social media campaign that's promoting a giveaway for an engagement ring, you probably noticed, well, one, I gave it a pretty good amount of context. I really explained what I was trying to achieve and some, at least some beginning details about this marketing project that I'm working on. And I also had ChatGPT assume the role of the person who would be doing this. So it's almost like you have to get ChatGPT to pretend to be you or the person who is doing this work so that it can kind of like assume a role or a character. So you're asking it to pretend to be the person who is doing this marketing. And that way it can like step into this responsibility, this task that you're giving it. Another follow-up prompt to this might be, please make these ideas specific to the Instagram Reels format. What would be some concepts for Reels? So if you remember the first prompt was just asking it to give me some general Instagram ideas, whereas this one provided some more context and had it narrow down its output even more. And that's a really great way to use ChatGPT. You can start broad with the context and then based on where you wanna go, you can kind of keep guiding it and narrowing down the instructions so that it continues to refine the results it gives you in the course of the actual conversation that you're having with the AI. So again, content ideation would be that use case of brainstorming. You could also use it for content creation. So it can actually create the final content for you. As I mentioned, you never just want to use ChatGPT's output as like the final product. You're going to want to revise it, refine it, check it, maybe reorganize it. But it can really give you a solid rough draft or like an outline or a starting point for your content. So it can use it can be used to create captions for social media posts. It can help you generate call to action phrases, hashtag ideas, blog posts, email marketing copy, subject lines. But again, don't be using this verbatim. It may not always perfectly align with your brand voice, although you can guide it in the chat to continue refining. But I think it's always best to work alongside AI and fine tune the output as you go. That really provides the best results. And then the last general use case for marketing would be to use ChatGPT to modify your existing content. I think this is one of my favorite use cases because in my experience, it's been the most powerful. So to use ChatGPT to repurpose your existing content, like say you already have blog posts, landing pages, more long form copy, and to have ChatGPT take that copy and then ask it to like pull out bits and pieces and distill it into shorter copy or just other forms that you can use elsewhere. So if you're not necessarily the best writer, or maybe you just don't have time to like edit and revise something over and over that's really long, you can kind of write a crappy first draft just to get the general ideas out and even to have a sampling of the voice that you want to be using. And you can copy and paste that into ChatGPT and ask it to rewrite it in a more engaging tone, to expand upon the ideas, to basically whatever. And it will take your crappy rough draft and turn it into something that is very impressive. I think you will be a little bit shocked by the results. Of course, whatever it gives in the output, I would look at it again and revise it and check it and tweak it, but it will get you from rough draft to final draft in a way shorter time frame than if you were to sit and like toil over that yourself. So now I wanna talk a little bit more specifically about how to use 
ChatGPT for all the different marketing activities that you would be doing in your jewelry business. So picture this, having an AI companion that not only revamps your social media game, but also fine tunes your email marketing and website content. Plus it's your brainstorming buddy and it's ready to toss ideas back and forth with you at the speed of light. It's kind of crazy. So let's, uh, social media is obviously an activity that a lot of jewelry brands are engaged in. So I wanna talk about more examples of how ChatGPT can be used to help you level up your social media. So it's no secret that all of you out there are utilizing social in some capacity, whether that's Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, you know that you always need fresh creative ideas on a regular basis. And because of that, our new best friend ChatGPT can come in and help make that process so much easier and less painful. One way ChatGPT can do that is in assisting you in keeping up with trends and market insights, which can be really hard to do unless you're like a social media expert who's constantly keeping up with what's happening on the platforms or even trends in fashion, in jewelry, in the industry, what customers like, market opportunities. So ChatGPT can actually give you that information and be almost like your team partner in allowing you to be more responsive to market demands. So like an example prompt for that would be, what are the emerging jewelry trends for Gen Z customers? Provide insights on design elements, materials, or styles that resonate with this demographic so we can tailor our social media content accordingly. So again, that would be so useful if you were new to targeting Gen Z. You could really do this for any type of audience demographic to better understand what type of content or give you I just ideas for new ways of communicating with your target audience. Also for social media, ChatGPT can generate really creative ideas for say seasonal marketing campaigns. I know it's really tough to keep up with new ideas every year, especially leading up to the big holiday season. So you can prompt ChatGPT with specific seasons or holidays and ask for campaign concepts that align with your brand. And that can just help you when you feel stuck, when you there's so much demand to come up with new ideas and starting this process months ahead of time, then you'll really have the space to like take those ideas, let them simmer and have time to come up with a marketing campaign that really works for your brand. So one example prompt for that would be like, we wanna create a summer themed marketing campaign, provide five unique campaign ideas that capture the essence of summer and showcase our jewelry collections in a fresh and vibrant way. Now, obviously that prompt I just gave you is on the more generic side. That would kind of start you on the more big general side of idea brainstorming. But as I said at the beginning, context is everything. So you could modify that prompt to give more specific details about your business, about the types of products you offer, maybe like the colors or the gemstones that you'll be featuring for the, for the summer. As much information as you can give it to help it know your business, that will give you the best results out. And since it's a chat format, again, you can start with a more general prompt and then based on the answers it gives you, you can reply back, oh, like I like ideas number one and three. Can you tailor them even further for insert X, Y, and Z? So it's very fluid. There's room for a conversation there. Again, it's just like talking to someone on your team there's gonna be some back and forth. And then when it comes to email marketing, ChatGPT can definitely help you there. I know personally, brainstorming subject lines is a very demanding activity. It's hard to keep coming up with interesting subject lines that are succinct 
attention grabbing, clear, direct, have call to actions. So if you can give ChatGPT some background about the goal, about the target audience, what is the general topic or idea of the campaign, then ChatGPT can give you some options for subject lines just to get you started on that brainstorming process. So an example prompt would be, we're launching a new jewelry collection targeting young professionals. Brainstorm 10 subject lines that evoke curiosity and capture their attention, emphasizing the collection's unique design and versatility. Again, it's kind of more on the general side, but you can start with that, or you can take my prompt and add more details and more context to it. Another thing I know a lot of jewelry businesses struggle with with email marketing is coming up with interesting body copy or like the writing in the email that is short, to the point, interesting, descriptive, but isn't super like wordy or taking up a lot of space on the page. So ChatGPT could definitely help you refine the concepts and the messaging for your email marketing copy if you ask it, or if you even have a draft, like you've written a couple sentences and you just wanna improve the clarity, the tone, make it have a call to action, then you can give it the copy you've already written and then ask it to revise it based on what you want to see come out of it. So the example prompt could be like, we're developing an email campaign to promote our upcoming flash sale, review our initial copy and offer suggestions to enhance the sense of urgency, highlight the limited time offer, and encourage immediate action. And then when it comes to website content, ChatGPT can help you there as well. It can help you expand rough drafts of blog posts, as I, I think I mentioned earlier. So you can collaborate with ChatGPT to refine a rough draft that you've written. If you have an existing draft, even if it's just like bullet points or incomplete sentences, to give some like specific examples, additional content, context to have it in your voice and then put that into chat GPT. It can take what you have already started and just make it better or expand upon it or actually like make complete sentences out of the bullet points that you've started. If you have trouble coming up with ideas for blog posts, ChatGPT can definitely help you there. So if you give it information about like the desired outcome, maybe some topics that are relevant to your business, some themes that you wanna highlight or trends or new products, it can definitely give you ideas. And again, you can have it start with say 10 ideas, see what it gives you. And if you don't like those ideas, you can kind of provide it some more context or, and details, or you can take a few of the ideas it's given you and ask it to expand upon those. Also, if you struggle with product descriptions, ChatGPT is awesome for that. I have heard the complaint from a lot of people that it gives very generic product descriptions. I think that that is true if you don't work alongside ChatGPT. It will use a lot of the same adjectives over and over, but usually that happens because you're not providing it with enough context or like giving it the information it needs to understand your brand. ChatGPT can produce really amazing content, but one thing it can't do is it can't read your mind or understand your business better than you can without you kind of like training it to know that. So even if you just have like bullet points about the products or words that you'd really like to use to describe them or unique features and you give ChatGPT somewhere to start with, it can actually write some really great descriptions for you. So you have to kind of learn how to help it work best for you. Basically, to successfully use AI for content creation, it requires a dynamic, iterative process. And as I said, it means that you have to be an actively engaged user. This is not a tool that will provide perfect results every time, but it can definitely be a valuable 
brainstorming companion, editor, just like teammate in general when it's used effectively. So that's it for today's chat about ChatGPT. Go to joyjoya.com slash jump for more information, action items, and further resources. Remember, you can only sign up for a few more weeks for that free Jumpstart program, and then access will be closed after July. Before I get into the gold mine, as well as my jewelry marketing news roundup, I want to share a case study of a jewelry brand that I think embodies a lot of the concepts I talk about in this podcast. So today's case study is about Shane Co. And I read about this new campaign that they're doing in JCK. So you probably already know that I love when a jewelry brand really puts the spotlight on its customers and taps into the emotional elements of buying and wearing jewelry. It should be no surprise then that I love this new campaign from Shane Co. So the president and CEO of Shane Co., Rorden Shane, said that they find immense joy in the heartfelt stories shared by the sales staff, stories of customers who infuse their lives with meaning through jewelry. These are narratives of things like the first pair of gold earrings, charm bracelets for new mothers, loving husbands, wedding bands. And so knowing that their customers have these stories, Shane Co. recently launched their brand new campaign called Made to Shine. And it's a warm celebration of the sentimental attachment and treasured moments that people associate with their jewelry. So debuting in this most recent June, Made to Shine is a unique initiative. It's designed to evoke genuine emotion and share these rich stories of actual customers. The campaign is spread across multiple channels, including radio and television, heartwarming online videos, engaging social media posts, and a captivating consumer contest. The Made to Shine campaign also extends an invitation to customers through this contest called Real Stories. So customers are encouraged to share their own personal anecdotes about how jewelry has touched their lives with the possibility of these stories being featured in a radio ad. And then 12 lucky participants will also get chosen to receive $1,000 so they can, quote, shine any way they want Basically, this campaign highlights the company's enduring mission to be like a friend in the jewelry business to customers. So this authenticity, this realness, it strives to touch people's hearts, relate to their stories, which it's it's like impossible not it's impossible to have jewelry and not have stories and emotional connection around that. And I know you listening or watching know that deep down. This is an industry, a business of connection and emotion. And I really wish that more jewelry brands would amplify that and like acknowledge it. Sometimes I feel like A lot of us, a lot of brands are just pretending that that's not true. Let's not tiptoe around this truth and bring it to life. Take advantage of it. Connect with your customers based on their emotional experiences. That creates authenticity in a brand. So what do you think? Let me know in a podcast review or YouTube comment. All right, let's get into the gold mine. If you're new to this podcast, the gold mine is a segment where I get a little more personal and talk about topics like mindset, success, personal challenges, triumphs, struggles, all about marketing, hopefully with the goal of connecting more deeply with you, my sparklers. So in today's gold mine, We're going to talk about the importance of sticking to or committing to really a theme in jewelry marketing. Now, how many of you have heard about this Barbie movie that dropped on July 21st? It's causing quite a ruckus. And there's also this new trend, Barbie core, which means pink, pink, and even more pink. You name it, accessories, clothes, home stuff, 
all in pink. And you must have also seen actress Margot Robbie, who's Barbie's star, rocking her pink looks everywhere. You just can't help but notice. So here's what I've been thinking about all of this. This Barbie hype has really got a lesson for all of us. In our business, in jewelry businesses, especially smaller businesses, I think we often jump from one idea to another too quickly, sometimes even within a week. We don't give people enough time to get the gist of our message, to get the hang of whatever we are promoting, whatever story we're telling. But when you look at the Barbie movie, we've been hearing about it and about Barbie core since at least since the beginning of the year. And instead of being tired of it, many people are pumped to see this big pink wave in theaters. And the team behind the Barbie movie is really owning it. They're not afraid to go full tilt into this theme. If someone's not into it, The people behind the movie marketing, they don't care, but the consumers who love it are having a blast with the fun, lighthearted vibe. A lot of people just can't even get enough of it. They want more, more, more. So here's what I'm saying. When you've got a cool idea or theme for your marketing, don't just drop it in a week because you think people are going to be bored of it or even because you yourself are sick of seeing it or hearing about it, you need to stick with it. You need to commit, you need to give it time, three months, six months, a year, whatever. Step into it, go all out. Let your customers have a chance to get into it. I think in today's fast paced world, it's really rare for things to stick around and make an impact, especially on such a large like cultural scale like Barbie. So it it really is remarkable. So I say, give your theme a chance to do its thing, and who knows, you may have a bigger impact than you've ever had before. So what do you think about that? Does it resonate with you? Are you excited for the Barbie movie? Tell me in a YouTube comment or podcast review. I'd love to know your thoughts. Okay, let's get into the news roundup where I share three relevant articles related to jewelry or marketing. So the first one comes from Allure and it's called Lush Cosmetics left most social media platforms two years ago. How's that going? (laughs) I'm pretty sure that I have mentioned this, I guess, case study before. So Lush, they make bath bath products, basically. And it's very interesting because I think a lot of businesses feel obligated to be on social media these days or like they will miss out on opportunities. Obviously, Lush has been around for a while. They're a big brand. They have a very loyal, almost like cult following. So some may say that they can afford to do something like this and not alienate their customers. But it's still a very bold move regardless. So is it possible for a business to leave social media and still continue to be successful? So they first halted their social media activity on meta platforms, including Instagram and Facebook, in November 2021. And the reasoning that they said was that they were concerned about the harmful impact of these platforms, algorithms, particularly on teens. They initially left in 2019, they came back in early 2020, but it seems like this latest departure in 2021 is permanent. And they had millions of followers on Facebook and Instagram. However, they did not abandon all social media platforms. So that's really important to take note of. They're still active on YouTube and Twitter. They don't post to their official TikTok. And the global brand director at Lush, Annabelle Baker, said that the algorithms were really limiting their reach, with only three to six percent of their followers seeing their content. And the company's stance against Meta and TikTok's algorithms reflects both ethical considerations and just general frustration because it is so much work and effort to manage a social media platform 
of a brand of that magnitude and to only get the reach that they're getting, I could see how that might feel like a waste of time. They never relied heavily on advertising, but they, again, because they have so many fans and user-generated content, you will st still see Lush Cosmetics on Instagram and Facebook, mostly because the people who use those products are posting them. So while the company can't conclusively determine whether leaving Instagram and Facebook impacted sales, the brand's loyalty among consumers and continued growth suggests that it hasn't experienced a significant loss. And experts note that other brands may also consider evaluating their relationship with social media, though none have followed Lush's example of their complete departure. So my main takeaway is Lush's strategic exit from meta platforms underlines that successful social media marketing can prioritize ethical alignment and lean more heavily on user-generated content over just having this presence on all the major platforms. The next article comes from CNBC and it's called Meta Threads Engagement Has Dropped Off Since Red Hot Debut. So last week I talked about Meta's new social media platform, Threads, which is supposed to be a competitor to Twitter. They reached a record 100 million signups in just five days. But since then, there's been a decrease in user engagement and growth. So data indicates that a significant drop in user engagement after Threads launch with the number of daily active users falling about 20% and user session time reducing by 50%. And other data is also um, corroborating this trend. So despite this initial surge and subsequent decline, Meta still remains positive about Thread's performance, stating that the platform's launch surpassed their expectations and that also what was interesting was most of the growth was organic, not resulting from promotions. So my main takeaway is, and I said this last week also, Threads potentially offers a new marketing opportunity given its rapid user growth, at least at the beginning, but anyone using Threads for their business should be really mindful that there has been this recent drop in user engagement and to pay attention to as the platform evolves um, to be attuned to how users are interacting with Threads and then adjust marketing strategies accordingly. And then the last article is called, Don't Ask for Reviews Too Soon. So reviews are a critical factor in purchasing decisions with 91% of people reading at least one review before buying. But new research indicates that waiting to ask customers for a product review leads to a higher likelihood of them leaving one. Early reminders may actually backfire and deter customers. So in two experiments involving a travel platform and a clothing marketplace, review request timing was manipulated. For travel, requests after 13 days increased reviews by 16, 68%, while for clothing, requests after 14 days increased reviews by 39%. If you try to remind your customers too early to leave a review, it can cause psychological reactants because they feel like their freedom to choose is being threatened. So they resist leaving a review. And this article says that many companies ask for reviews too soon, which is jeopardizing their ability to get reviews. So the timing of these rev review requests is really important. If you're not sure, you can try different types of timing to optimize your requests. So my main takeaway is given the nature of jewelry as both a product and an experience in some ways, it would be beneficial to wait at least 10 to 14 days after purchase before asking for a review. And this delay really respects the customer's evaluation time, reduces the, this risk of psychological reactance, which could lead to higher review rates and potentially more positive feedback. 
Did you have any questions about anything in this episode or jewelry marketing jumpstart? You can always email me Larissa, that's L-A-R-Y-S-S-A at joyjoya.com. If you love this podcast, please share it with a friend who'd appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe as well as leave a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're completely new to digital marketing, then you'll want to purchase and read a copy of my book, Jewelry Marketing Joy. Visit joyjoya.com slash book for more information.